Hello, Lindsay here. I am about to make some awesome marinara sauce and I hope that you'll uh, enjoy this video and I hope you'll try the recipe. This will be my first uh, recipe video. I hope to have more um, coming up soon. I just need to decide what I'm doing. A lot of the foods that we cook are really super, super simple and they're already available online. This one is kind of a special recipe um, that I really enjoy and I hope that you will too. So here we go. So the ingredients that you're going to need are three as big as you can find um, hot house tomatoes, one can of crushed tomatoes. This is a 28 fluid ounce can. Um, some olive oil, either spray or um, bottle. You'll also need basil, some Italian spices, some parsley, some cilantro if you love it, um, and also a small onion. And later I will combine that to make a meatball and pasta sauce, but right now we're just going to concentrate on doing the marinara sauce. So the other things you'll need is a barbecue or a grill and um, I'm using my Dutch oven to cook the sauce in and your, your stove. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is deal with these, on, or with these tomatoes. So now we're going to cut them in half and I kind of do it along the longest length of the tomato. Most of the tomatoes are round but sometimes one side is a little bit longer than the other. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to spray the open sides of the tomato with the olive oil. This will help with um, this will help with sticking on the grill, and also because this side is kind of raw compared to the compared to the outside of the tomato. So I like to spray them with a little bit of olive oil, and then now we're going to put them on the grill. Okay, so I've heated the grill up. It's about 400 degrees. And I'm just going to throw these tomatoes on face down. And I'm going to try a little bit. We'll just leave them for a few minutes. Okay, so the tomatoes are grilling. Oh, look how perfect that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and put them over. I love grilling the tomatoes. It just gives an awesome flavor to the thing. And we're just gonna leave that for probably about another two or three minutes. Okay, so while we wait the other two or three minutes for the tomatoes, we're gonna go ahead and cut up the onion. Sorry if my hands are in the way. I gotta figure out a better way to film the cooking stuff. Maybe I'll put you guys in front or something, but for right now, this is what we have. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice up the onion. Now this onion doesn't need to be really big. We need about half a cup or so of onion. I'm not a huge onion fan, but I find that onion powder and onion flakes don't really make this, um, this sauce authentic, I guess you could say. So I do 
onion in this. Onions are also high in carbs, so I don't necessarily want them to overpower, but we will put it in. Alright, so there is our chopped onion. And when we bring in the tomatoes, we will start cooking. Alright. So, this recipe... is good for so many things. There's the timer for the tomatoes. So, let's take a walk. <laughs> so this recipe is good for plenty of things. You can use it for your pasta, you can use it for your pizza sauce. Um, pretty much anything you need tomato sauce with, you can use this sauce. All right, so I'm gonna turn you around. As you can see, these tomatoes look amazing and the skin is falling off, which is perfect. That's what we want. So I'm just going to turn these over on to the cutting board here. Alright, so there we go. Okay, so now that we have the tomatoes grilled, we're going to go ahead and peel off the skin. They are a little bit hot. Sometimes it helps to use a knife to kind of tease it off. <laughs> and you could probably use tongs or whatever else you want to use too. Sometimes though you have to little just give it a little nudge with a cut just to peel it off. Especially around the top of it, it seems to hold on to the skin um, up top there. So. so if you can hear the popping in the background, that's my pan heating up. I'm going to go ahead and toss the onions in very shortly. Here. giving it a minute or two to heat up. So, ouch. <laughs> All right, so the grill flavor kind of gives it a little bit of an edge in the sauce, I don't know. I find a difference between just like throwing tomatoes from a can in and grilling your tomatoes. I find a difference. I'm just gonna move you over so that you can see the pan because we will start. There you go. So the pan is hot enough now that we're gonna start cooking. So I like to cook my onions until they are translucent and getting a little bit of color on them. So that'll take a few minutes and I will meet you back for the next ingredient. Okay, so I just kind of guesstimate on my spices. So the first thing we're going to add is garlic. I don't know if I said garlic is part of the ingredient. Sometimes I forget because it's kind of one of those things that I just put in everything. And I like my stuff really garlicky, so that's probably two, two tablespoons of garlic. And you just want to move it around with your onions. Let me turn the fan off for a minute. <laughs> so you just want to move it around with your onions until it becomes fragrant. Smells so good already, and I've barely started. 
So I'm going to add like probably a teaspoon or two teaspoons of cilantro. Probably the same amount of parsley. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> and I'm going to add some Italian seasoning. I kind of go crazy with that. I don't know. Lots of seasoning. It smells so delicious. And then we're going to throw our tomatoes in. Now I've, I've diced them sort of or cut them in slices. And as you cook them, um, they will break down a little bit more, which is awesome. And we'll start to take on all the spices and onions and stuff that we've done. This also, if you do this cold without, um, without grilling your tomatoes, makes a pretty good pico de gallo as well. So you could make this cold or hot. If you were making it cold, obviously you would omit the crushed tomatoes. Um, I'm also going to add some basil. I just kind of add whatever I see fit. Um, I'm going to add some salt and pepper. So salt, I use pink Himalayan salt or Redmond's Real Salt. And then pepper, I use a mixture of red peppercorns, oops, of red peppercorns and um, black ones. I just like the flavor of the red peppercorns. And so I tend to make my own kind of pepper mix. <laughs> and I really like the flavor of it. So whoopsies. Don't mind my messy stove. <laughs> If you can see any of the mess, we pretty much clean up after every meal, but sometimes the stove gets missed until the next time. I don't know, real life, you guys, real life. Seriously. So these tomatoes are cooking down awesome. You can break them down right in the pot, which is great. And you want to let that cook for probably about 10 minutes, I think, with just the tomatoes in before you add the tomato sauce. Sorry, just reaching. Um, and you do that so that it gives the tomatoes a chance to break down a little bit. Now, because this is really chunky, you will use like a hand blender or a ninja blender or whatever to puree the sauce afterwards but I just find that putting the real well not real but putting non canned tomatoes in makes all the difference in the world okay so that is delicious it smells so good I wish we could have like smell vision on YouTube. That would be excellent because you guys are missing out right now. Unless of course you're cooking it while you're doing it, but if you are not, that's okay too. I hope you will try this recipe. It is super, super good, like I said. And you can leave it in your fridge for a couple weeks and use it up with whatever you want. Sometimes I'll even dip like plantains in it <laughs> if I'm like missing salsa or something. So I'm just going to open the can of tomato, crushed tomatoes. Just give that a quick open. Oops. I almost need two, two more hands. Sometimes in these videos, my husband will come and help cook. So you'll get to meet him. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen pictures of him, but that's about it. 
we are trying to get ourselves used to the camera a little bit more because we are planning to bike across Canada hopefully next year and so we'll be doing a lot more videoing then all right so I think that's about 10 minutes might be a little bit less but you can add your tomato fresh tomatoes you could also do this with diced tomatoes but then your sauce will be a little bit more runnier Sometimes I find if this is too runny, I'll add some tomato paste. But this actually looks really good. You want your marinara sauce to be kind of thin, but not really thin. And once I blend it with the hand blender um, and break up all these tomato chunks, it will make it a little bit thicker. But you can see like even now, like that's standing on the spoon. So it is really thick. So now I'm going to turn it down and I'm just going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Okay. Then I will come back and show you the finished product after I have blended it. So there is my homemade marinara sauce in the pan still I need to still jar it it's still a little bit warm to put in the jar so I like to have it a little bit cooler just so that um, when I put it in the fridge it doesn't conden condensate or whatever in the jar um, so probably what I'll do is I'll leave it on the stove until we cook dinner and then whatever's left I will put in jars. So I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. Um, I hope to do more recipes very soon and uh, yeah so I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video please leave a comment like the video, subscribe, you know, do all that other stuff. Um, there will be more content coming and I hope that, that you guys will enjoy this journey as much as I have been over the last two and a half months. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that marinara sauce. And it's not just for keto people, you, anybody can make that marinara sauce and it's delicious on everything. All right, well, we'll see you later. Have a good day. Bye.